Good morning, everybody. Um, let me see if it works. Oh, okay. Well, I'm talking about UX and machine learning, and my focus is uh, thinking about the what machine learning will show about UX and stuff like that. For example, how we modify the way of designers works to design the user experience, how to develop a design approach around machine learning, and how to incorporate the power of machine learning in UX work. The, the idea, of course, is to bring some insights, initial insights, and notes of this question that I'm studying at this moment. But first, I think it's important to let me introduce myself. And my name is Carla De Bona. I'm a designer. I have a master in communication and semiotics. I'm a professor in several MBAs in FIAP. I'm a professor in IAG, uh, Instituto Europeu de Design. Teachers teach several boot camps UX. Basically, what I'll, I teach for my students is UX and design thinking. And I'm a UX consultant, works with startups in general in early stage to help to design the UX of products and services. And finally, I think it's important to say that I'm a co-founder of Reprogramma, a social initiative impact uh, that teaches women how to code. Basically, uh, our course is free, and we, we created new front-end developers. Uh, well, before I talk about WAX, uh, I needed to focus on machine learning, and of course, bring some context and concepts about that. And I will start talking about context, and when we talk about machine learning and artificial intelligence, usually what comes in our mind is scenarios in the future where robots dominate and interact like a human. We have a lot of examples about that in our mind. And of course, the first, and the first that we think is the classic how 90,000 from the movie, A Space Odyssey. If you think the other most recent in the movie Her from 2013, yes, 20, no, 2030, sorry, of director Spike Zonzi, Samantha, the robot, uh, the personal assistant, speaks, thinks, and maybe feel like a human because in the movie, the other, the, the guy uh, in the picture and robot, the computer, fall in love. And yes, if you didn't see the movie, I did a spoiler for you, my bad, sorry, I go to the next slide. Uh, and most recently, probably you know, you, you know the series, maybe you don't watch, but you know, the wonderful HBO series Westworld, a park populated with androids where it's very difficult to know it's a robot or human. And yes, all these centers are very amazing, are very nice. We have a lot of curiosity. It, one day it will can be possible like that. But if you think about machine learning at this moment, what we have is something like that. Uh, we are talking about machine learning now, and the visual scenario is a lot of graphics and studying of patterns without forgetting, of course, the long algorithms. That is machine learning, not the robot, sorry. Uh, the real scenario is more like this, and what we can say about that, uh, disappointed but not surprised, because it, that's the machine learning at the moment. And maybe the examples of entertainment that we have just show our fascination about robots and a big potential. Because of this big potential, the market are looking with a lot of interest and attention to machine learning. What's curious about that is that the term machine learning is not new, like blockchain, for example. The topic of machine learning exists more than 50 years ago. The term was born in 1959 uh, by Arthur Samuel, the guy of the picture, and means, and means what is in the slide. Field of study that gives computer the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. Maybe it's very obvious for you, for you guys because you, everybody probably is developer, but I think it's important that we have this background to understand what we can do with user experience or not. Uh, other point that I want to show uh, you about context and history is that w we are in the beginning of history in machine learning. We already have some products with machine learning, like uh, digital assistants, Siri, Cortana, Alexa. Uh, autonomous cars are in testing. We have some accidents until now, etc. And yes, the simple but very useful, and thank God, developers, because you did, you did that. Uh, it's been free. It's useful for my life. Thank you so much for this, this apply of machine learning. Uh, just to mention a few examples that came to my mind now. And probably we'll see more and more implementation of machine learning because Gartner, a global research uh, company, 
said in the in this graphic with the, the this famous chart called the hype cycle for emergence technology of 2016 machine learning will take two to five years to reach mainstream then this is the beginning and we are in, at this moment right now because of that i'm trying to understand uh what machine learning will affect my job my work i hope i will have a work not a robot you do my job maybe uh, to understand this uh, first question that we have is uh, why design for machine learning is different. And let's explore some points of machine learning system. And not talking about code because you know I'm a designer, sorry. Uh, the target here prepare the background and concepts of machine learning because this way I can show you implication in, of machine learning in UX. And if you are a developer, I know maybe the things that I will say are very obvious for you, but for most people, who are part of product development, and maybe you have to consider that. Uh, for example, designers, product owners, managers, sellers, it's important to learn and understand these three perspectives. Uh, machine learning has a different kind of logic, a different kind of precision, and a different kind of problem. And I'm going to explain each of these three points, of course, uh, starting with the first. When we talk, about a different kind of logic, we are talking about fuse logic. And basically, machine learning enables systems to deal with more complex concepts, or we can say human concepts. What's different of the most system that we use now? Uh, because they've been designed to deal with binary logic. That means true or fair, false, in last case, zero or one, right? Uh, what's good in the binary logic is that easier than machine learning to build and test systems because the system will behave in a predictable manner and in a general follow precisely the developer's intention. Probably is that. But if we think, we, if we think about fuse logic, uh, it's what we do in our communication. This form of logic is related to approximate rather than exact reasoning. For example, we might identify an object as being very small, slight as a head, pretty nearby, or my examples, big, normal, very small, very big. These statements do not have an exact meaning and are often context-dependent. And this is very important to understand how we think about this situation. And I use an example, sorry if you are hungry in this, mo angry in this moment, because it, I will talk about cookies. Uh, <laughs> My bad, again. For example, in this slide, we say that a cookie is small because this means very different scale than we say that a planet is small. Describing object in these terms requires other knowledge of the range of possible values that exist with a specific domain of meaning. What is curious is that if we had seen a lot of cookies, we could not say with great assurance that we knew the full range of possible cook size. Probably you don't eat all cooks of the world. With sufficient experience, we could never be completely sure that we had seen the smallest and the largest of all cooks in the universe. But we could feel, we could feel uh, relative certain that we had a good approximation of the range. And we take a lot of decisions in our life based in this approximation, not the real, the exactly, approximation of a lot of decisions we, we do that. And machine learning helps us to deal uh, with fuser and human concepts, but also bring some design challenges related to the problematic nature of working with imprecision, terminology, and unpredictable behavior. And this is the, uh, exactly my next topic, a different kind of precision. When I talk about a different kind of precision, uh, in the design of conventional programming language is that each feature should work in a predictable and repeatable manner. We uh, respect that. No matter how many times we perform uh, arithmetic operations such as 2 plus 2, we should always get the same answer, 4. If it is ever, ever untrue that a bug exists in the language or tool you are using, and we have to correct that. Okay. Machine learner, learning, on the, on the other hand, can be thought of as a system that are often correct about more complicated things like identify human faces in an image, but sometimes machine learning will be wrong like our behavior. 
think sometimes you cannot identify a friend in a friend in a picture because the pattern that you have in your mind about your friend was not capable to identify to the new pattern in the picture in the picture maybe the, is the angle maybe is the light maybe something different in the picture that you think really it's you rather it should be understood and considered with the design of machine learning and yes system that they are cap capacity for dealing with extraordinary complex concepts and patterns also comes with a certain degree of, of imprecision. And then I have to talk to you again about cooks. To understand that the kind of imprecision and that we have in our life, I have to tell you a story about cooks. I was in a bakery. I asked the menu. In the menu was writing cookies and the price. I decided to eat a cookie and coffee and don't have any information about size of the cookie. Then, based in my, in my, in the pattern of all cookies that I eat in my life, I expect a normal cookie with normal size. The default cookie that I show you in the last, the uh, other slides that I show. But for my surprise, I got a super cookie. And uh, this is what I receive. I can't imagine, I can't predict the correct size of cookie. This is the question of precision that we can expect in machine learning. Maybe you have a lot of information, but you don't have the, the right answer because you don't know all things patterns. And probably this will happen. And we are thinking about that when we are creating some system and something like that. A different kind of problem is the last string of the, is the last perspective that I want to show you. Machine learning can perform complex tasks that cannot be addressed by conventional computer platforms. Okay, very nice, very interesting. Uh, a lot of companies want to, to use that. But uh, the process of training and utilizing machine learning systems often comes with a lot of headache than the process of developing conventional systems. So you should only take machine learning approach to give a problem if not viable conventional approach exists. Even for texts that are well suited to a machine learning solution, there are number, numerous of consider, uh, very, a lot of considerations about which learning mechanism to use and how to curate the training data so that it can be most comprehensive to learning system. Then the question is how to identify that are well suited for machine learning solution as well as the, num no, the a lot of the varied factors that go into apply learning algorithm to specific problems. Again about cooks, I promise this is the last, the last slide about cooks. Uh, I have to finish the saga with cooks. Imagine that you want to, co to cook in a cookie. Using machine learning to learn the size is not a smart uh, decision. Uh, a simple research would solve the problem because uh, you put the parameters and then solve the problem of uh, how the size of the, the full cookies. Then you can make cooks with normal size and happy and glorious without using machine learning. And if I try to use machine learning in the process to make a cookie, probably we will not in the question of size because it's not useful to this problem. And maybe you have to think about that when we are creating new products and new services in the world. And if you think about machine learning, uh, given the three initial perspectives about why design to machine learning is different, want you, uh, what you have to keep in mind at the moment is when thinking about machine learning is that machine learning is useful in solving problems that can be encapsulated by a set of examples but not easily described in formal terms. Then we we'll have to think in a quicker way about way of learning or type, types of machine learning. And probably you will be angry with me because I did a simplification. I just have three and I know that has others, but I think it's not so important to just, just talk. I want to give you a background, then you can follow with me when, you, when I'm thinking about user experience. And then the next stop is about machine learning or ways of learning. And depend, of course, depending on the application and what data is available, there are different types of machine learning algorithms to show the from. And I, I will try to be difficult, like I said. The first is supervised learning. And supervised learning allows us to make prediction using correctly labeled, labeled data. 
labeled data is group of examples that has informative tag or outputs. For example, photos with associated hashtags like Instagram or houses features uh, a number of bedrooms, location and its price. Like my example in the slide. Uh, by using supervised learning, we can fit a line to the labeled data, each split the data into categories or represents the trend of the data. Using this line, we are able to make prediction on new data. For example, we can look at new photos and predict hashtags or look at new houses, futures and predict the price. If the output you are trying to predict it is a list or tags or values, we call it, it classifications. If the output we are trying to predict is a number, we call it a regression. The second is unsupervised learning. And unsupervised learning is helpful when you have unlabeled data or we are not exactly sure what outputs are meaningful. Instead, we can identify patterns strong unlabeled data. For example, we can identify related items or an e-commerce website like Amazon, or recommend items to someone based on other who made similar purchases. If the pattern is a group, we call it a cluster. If the pa pattern, sorry, it's a rule, uh, it's a rule, uh, we call uh, it an association. And the third, the, the last, uh, reinforcement learning doesn't use existing data set. Instead, instead, we create agents to collect its own data through trial and error uh, in an environment where it's reinforced with a reward. For example, a gente can learn to play Mario, Mario Bros, Mario Kart, I'm very good at that, to play Mario by receiving a positive reward for collecting coins and a negative reward for walking into a gomba or the turtle. Reinforcement learning is inspired by the way that humans learn and has turned out to be an effective way to teach computers. For example, when you are a child, you learn, like, you learn this way, to try to experiment and discover it's good or no. If you have a reinforcement for your mother, uh, if, you, if you try to, to, to play with energy, probably your mother will say, no, please don't stop that. In a way, probably not so calm like I do, but probably is the way that you learn about, about what you can do or not in the world. Okay, when we talk about that, then we have the way of learning, and, the, what, and the, a different kind of logic, precisions, and a different kind of problem. And then, we have, when we are thinking about a problem in machine learning, we have to think what approach is viable. We have to consider that things, for example, understand the problem you are trying to solve in the available data with constraint, the types of machine learning you can use. Identify objects in an image with supervised learning it requires a label that set of images, for example. However, constraints are the fruit of creativity. In some cases, you can set out the quality data that is not already available or consider other approaches. And this is a question that you have to do when you are trying to create a product using machine learning. What approach is viable to this situation? The second question is, what is the margin of error? Even though machine learning is a science, it comes with a margin of error. It's important to consider how a user experience might be impacted by the margin of error. It's very important. For example, an uh, example very simple, uh, when a uh, an autonomous car fails to recognize it, its surrounding people can get hurt. Then we have to, because of that, we had, when you are doing a lot of tests, I don't know if you know that oh, Uber, uh, did a test that, uh, that a person has um, uh, shocked with the car and then they stopped the, uh, uh, the tests for a while because of this accident. Then they are trying to understand uh, the margin of error. And if you think about cars, it's very important that the margin of errors is not so big, please. And if it's worth it, because even machine learning has never been as accessible as it is today, Yes, and probably in the next few years we'll go and go and go. It will require additional resources, developers, and time to be integrated into a product. Yes, and we have to because it's complex to do that. This makes it important to think about whether the resulting impact justify the amount of resources needs to implement. And when you think about the three questions, these three questions, what we have is 
the kinds uh, the different kind of logic, the different kind of precision, and the different kind of problem. Because of that, I talked to you before about that. Because it's important to have this mindset to understand what we will do with machine learning or not. And probably, uh, I'm like a designer in my position. Uh, what I have to think about is why we use machine learning or why we do not use machine learning. So in addition to understanding the types of machine learning, you also need to have a solid concept of how logic and precision works, as well as understanding the type of problems machine learning solves. Then, now, okay, we have a uh, background of machine learning, and I think we can relate it with user experience, or try to do that in some few concepts. Uh, the first question is, how incorporate machine learning to design process. And I have four topics to show you and give you some insights about. The first is designers and developers, or developers and designers. And probably we have to, to think about two aspects, deep, collabor deep collaborative relationships to take full advantage of machine learning. We do that in this moment Probably the front end of the developer and the designer uh, works very closely to create and elaborate the experience. We do that. Then digital designers collaborate almost uh, constantly with front end developers today. And we will need similar collaboration if we, uh, AI, special, uh, AI, sorry, AI specialists and data science specialists will be the relationships of the future to understand the deep questions mentioned before if you want to take full advantage of machine learning or if you want to understand that we have to invest our money in this, in this stuff in this moment in the context that we have. Maybe you have to create a more co-creation work because this way we can create more experiences good for the, the users. Uh, <coughs> Designer, uh, when we think about how machine learning can be applied, uh, and designers should be able to talk with software developers about what's possible, how to prepare, and what's outcome to expect. And probably we think about that, the relation and the designers and developers. And when we think about human-centered design, and I think it, this is a concept very strong, a file is very strong when you think about design, because we try to understand the motivation, we try to understand the inspiration, we try to understand the, the necessity of users, then with that we, we try to create some solution that will be good for him. This is what we do at this moment. Then we do a lot of researches. With these researches, we create some requirements of, of some requirements from these insights of the research. With these requirements, we create a flux. Uh, we create a, a flow. With the flow, we did some uh, some screens. Then with these some screens, or I frame, we did the design, and then we create a digital product. This is the class, the, the traditional. Uh, process when you think about user experience. But when you think about machine learning, I think we have two things that we have to think about and probably do change a lot of things. Hyper-personalized experience, probably when, for example, now when you think about user experience, we create personas, personas represent our users, then sometimes we have two personas, sometimes we have three personas, sometimes we have one personas, but we try to use this persona to represent our general public. Machine learning can help create user-centric products by personalizing experiences to the individuals who use them. This allows us to improve things like recommendation, search results, notification, ads, uh, a design specific to the, the, the user, for example. For example, we have, uh, when you think about user experience and user interface, we try to create uh, the right color to the concept, etc. And then we have problems with accessibility because sometimes you cannot see the contrast that the design imagine that is very, very good. And maybe I know that you can do that uh, and you can manage and configure that, but probably we can anticipate this and, okay, now I know this is my user, then I have to put this contract of color, for example. When machine learning starting taking over the part of the process, 
the ability to scale human center designer and make them hyper personalized will become more viable and accessible for more companies. More personalization in the user experience usually means more relevance for the specific user, which leads to better conversion rates. If you are a company, you want a lot of that. Uh, design feedback, and the other thing that I think we have to think about, and probably this will be very good, design feedback loops are going to get shorter. As methods such as machine learning start providing designer, designers with deep, deeper, more precise insights, design will need to respond and adapt more quickly. And yes, we have uh, a lot of feedback for our platforms and systems now, but probably we, are, we will have the, the feedback and we, the machine learning will understand the pattern, you will understand the, the result and probably get some, res some results very fast, not the way is that, not the way it is today. When you think about that, uh, we have uh, specifically talking about hyper-personalized experience. I want to talk about one point, creating smarter, more modular design system. Uh, machine learning can help make your design system even more robust. If you are not familiar with the term design system, it's a series of patterns, models, and elements that combine and build the design language of a brand or product. From enterprise to startups, companies are trusting design systems more and more to keep the products consistent for, user, for, for the users. And consistent is... Um, a risk from Nielsen very important. Maybe the maybe if you, when we think about consistency, consistency is the, is the most important risk that we have because we lo we like we, we like users love consistency. If I change my platform a button of position, if I change the position of the button, and you are uh, every day you click in, the, in that button, probably what will happen? You you. In the day, in the, with the new challenge, we will we, be very angry. Ah, oh, the bottom is changed, ah, oh, etc. Because we love the consistency. And design system will, will help the companies to maintain uh, the, consistent, uh, the consistent very well. For example, uh, good, very famous companies using design system, like Salesforce, Airbnb, we work in Google, and etc. And Airbnb, Airbnb. And uh, I create solid design system. It's very good at what they are doing. Just to mention a few examples. Now imagine adding an intelligence layer to this system, because now the designer do that to, to, to organize this, this, the system. But imagine that we create, a, we add a layer, an intelligence layer to the system that can analyze metrics on how users interact with each of these elements and immediately understand which one works best for each function. The more this machine learning learns about what's working and what isn't, the more it can start to optimize each of these modules to make sure they deliver better results. And probably it will happen and then we, we will have a, a interface prepared for me, for you, in a specific way, hyper-personalized experience. The other thing that I want to talk to you about human-centered design and now about fast loop of feedback is, for example, methods such as A-B a, B testing can start to happen automatically and probably I will lose my job because <laughs> methods such as A-B testing can start happening automatically without human, Im 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 sorry, human medi mediation. Machines will be able to identify potential areas of, areas of optimization in the product, because now I do that, I try to understand that in the computer, analyze the data, but probably machine learning you that gooder than better than me. Uh, understand then, understand how this optimization can happen, replace a word, change a button's color, reorder models on a page, then the machine learning will implement the change and run the A-B test, and then probably you, developer, will lose your job too if you are working with A-B testing like me. Uh, but not a problem, we will rearrange that. Uh, analyze the results and decide which version is performing best. 
update the product with the new design and then restart the cycle. And what is the human in this process? And probably when machine learning got the space in the design, in the projects uh, with user experience, probably we will see this often. And then we are thinking about what's my function like a designer if I cannot, if I if it's not important that I think about uh, about uh, A/B testing, because machine learning will do this better than me, then probably I will have to think about the right question. And because of that, I I talk to you about the a different kind of logic, a different kind of problem, a different kind of precisions. Because maybe uh, the, the if you want to work with a good user experience, you have to understand what will happen with that. Then you will focus on strategic things and not the usual thing that machine learning will solve is better than you. And better than me too. And then I want to talk to you about uh, the third topic, anticipatory, anticipatory design. And I know uh, I will talk about this, but I will start with a few examples that what is that. First, Nest, the, in this image, is automated the thermostat, learns with your heating cooling habits, and then automatically adjusts the temperature of your home according to your preferences. Then you don't have to think about, hmm, I, li I like 25, hmm, I like to sleep with 18. No, I just, uh, I just put some da data, then they will understand what I like it, and then they will configure it for me that, and then I will solve my problem, and this exists raw, if you want to know that is nest.com. Another example about anticipatory design is, Digit is a truly, uh, it's a, a startup, uh, it's a truly anticipatory finance app that analyzes your income and purchase history. It's look for saving opportunities, then automatically transfer the extra cash flow into an insurance account. They learn how you spend it, so you don't have to change your life. You just live. You just, you just you like, you watch Netflix and then just think about that your money. Just know when to take a break and when it's cool to save money. And then they know that because you have apps and then you just live your life. And they decide, okay, now I have to, to, to save some money. And when we think about anticipatory design, just to remind you, but probably you know that, uh, we have to collect data. In this example, I, saw, I, did, I said that. We have to create some algorithms based off the ways of learning, of machine learning, and then we create anticipate, anticipated choices. Nice. But when we think about this, about that, being one step ahead of you, this is the, this is the question. Effects of uh, because design is that anticipated based on your behavior. Your behavior is measured using machine learning. Uh, it reduces the amount of choices we have to make because the system will decide the name of the user and decide what they want, etc. And tal. You and I regularly suffer from decisions fatigue sometimes without being aware of it. This phenomenon is a consequence of the many decisions we make on a daily basis. And it's very scary because I probably, I don't know if you know that, but did you know that uh, we make 35,000 decisions a day? This number feels huge, but in fact, what is curious, because if you notice, I like to, to talk about food. Uh, we make around 2,026 decisions a day, all just food alone. For example, cookies. Uh, and this is why anticipatory design gains terrain and our experience gets more and more automated. Just to reduce the amount of daily choices and to make our lives easier. Reducing complexity and simplify life. Okay, this is the good thing of the anticipatory design, but we have some problems and we have to think about that. And probably designers, uh, when we think about machine learning, designers uh, has a question that they, they have to create a strong position ethics and think about how you can inf because you when you think uh, when you are a designer you know that when you are creating a uh, user experience you will uh, you influence the comp the behavior of the of the the user but probably with machine learning these questions will be strong and, and probably like a designer you have to get a strong position about that i'm telling that because uh how if everything we do 
and decide is based on an algorithm, how can we how can we ever discover new things? The idea behind sport design focus on prediction and eliminate choice. Nice. It's good. It's good if, if we don't think about some, some decisions that we have to do every day. But it uh, automates our journey the more... Uh, it, it's automates our journey. Okay. But the more automation we accept, the less human we become. We are risking to end up in the big filter bubble. We have that in Facebook. Because of that, we fight so much in Facebook uh, about politics. Uh, then probably my family don't talk with me about politics, etc. Because we have the bubble. And this is because we are automating and, f and just focus on what we want. And this is very dangerous if you think about this. Meaning, we get isolated on our all cultural or ideological bubbles without a chance of getting out. And this is a problem. And you have to think about that. Because you are creating systems, a lot of systems and platforms that we don't solve this problem. Just, just solve the problem, the good thing of unsupported design, but we have creating a lot of problems of relations in a society and thinking like a human. And maybe this is the question. It's not the question, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not against machine learning. My question is, we have to think of what we are doing because this is the future that we are creating. And this is problem is very important. And I'm, te I'm telling that because in order to make anticipatory design happen, we need to rethink the privacy ecosystem and maybe this is the the second the last thing i want to talk to you we have a concept called privacy by design it's a framework to system engineers and publishing 2009 uh, the europa gdpr uh, regulation incorporate privacy by design and it has a lot of com a lot of text about that but they have seven principles uh, proactive, not reactive. Uh, preventive, not remedial. Privacy as the full settings. Privacy embedded into design. And this is very important because of that I'm talking about uh, if you are thinking about what you are doing when you create a system that solves some problem of the user. Okay, solve the problem of the user. But the impact, the consequence. We, we probably, with machine learning, we have to take care with what we are doing because, pro because, for example, we create some bubbles if you are, you are thinking about anti our design. Um, the four is full functionality, positive sum, not zero sum. Uh, the end-to-end -end security, full life cycle protection, visibility and transparency, keep it open, and respect for user pri privacy keep it user centric then we came to the first the first point uh, just I, do, I just want to talk some 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 points that I think it's important to, to uh, of the seven points here uh, visibly and transparency keep it open privacy by design seeks to assure all stakeholders that whatever the business practice or technology involved it's in fact operating according to the state promises and objectives subject to independent verification its component parts and operation remains visible and transparent to user and provides alike remember trust but verify like if we talking about politicians in the last talk and the, o the other thing that i want to talk to you is about uh, privacy embedded into design. Privacy by design is embedded into the design and architecture of IT system and business practices. It's not bolted on as, on as at all after the fact. The result is that privacy becomes an essential component of the core functionality being delivery. Privacy is integral to the system without diminishing functionality. Maybe we have to think about that because if someone has our data, then uh, they can share the data, then my priv I don't have my privacy anymore. And this is the, the four points that I want you, you, that you think about when you think about how to construct products and services when you use machine learning. The relation of developers and designers needs change. Maybe we have to create uh, bridges and talk about that because when I think about product, the product has now a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of algorithms. And maybe, like a designer, I don't understand a lot of algorithms. 
I, I just see texts and think, what is hell? But, uh, but I can't understand the behavior of mine because when you think like a designer, you study a lot that to product, to create some products. And maybe you have to use it, the, our knowledge and doing an interface to, to, to take good decisions about what we are creating. Uh, how and other thing, the second is uh, human centered design. How the files of human centered design will change the possibilities and limitations of anticipatory design, so important to discuss that, and automate, automated versus freedom. What's important? What's the limit? What we have to do about that? And of course, what's privacy now and day, nowadays? And what's the question of ethic that designers can contribute and designers? and design our user experience. Maybe we have to think about that to understand uh, the limitations or, or the possibilities of the, the machine learning. Uh, and in a, of course, this is just um, initial studies, but sometimes that we can think now to be, think, we can think about that now, but in the because in the future we, we don't want to be reactive and oh okay we did some bad decisions now we have to 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 then try to solve that maybe you can try to anticipate what you are doing and what you are creating because uh, if you think about designing every behavior can be created and this is very important and then has a lot of responsibility let's show devices if you work if you you work, if you work with machine learning and create products and services, if you are not a designer, it doesn't matter, but I think it's important to do that because this is a big revolution hap uh, uh, happens in our products, in our life. Uh, get as much knowledge about machine learning as you can and keep being creative and envision new ways to embed and apply machine learning in your products. This is what, uh, what we have at this moment is a um, new revolution of designer, uh, new, sorry, a new revolution in designer user experience. Curious, if you think uh, about timing, etc., and revolutions of how to think about products, it's been about 10 years. If you think the first iPhone uh, Barnes or was launched in, Bra in Brazil, sorry, was launched in the world, uh, was in 2007. And 11, 11 years. It's about 11 years, 12 years since the last major revolution in digital design took hold, mobile devices. Mobile devices change our, our, change our life, and in a quick way, in a quick, in a quick time, just 10 years. Think about the human history. It's just, uh, it's just, it's just a little time. Uh, probably over the next 10 years, if the chart of, Gra uh, of Gartner seen the seems a good prediction, uh, the machine learning, the insights uh, it can deliver will again radically change the whole of designers in creating meaningful and engaging experience. I don't know all the answers. Uh, probably I just want to, that you think about that. But uh, what we have in mind, that uh, revolution about how we do products is coming and we have to think about that serious because we have created computers about person. Thanks so much. If you want to see this slide, do just access slideshare, slideshare.net bar Carla de Bona. And if you want to find me on social media, it's Carla de Bona in all social medias. Very easy. Thank you so much. <laughs>